great mother speaks. I am great mother, holy spirit, yin, divine mother, cosmic moon, deep space, the moon, dark matter, the void, the black hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mammy, and Mother Mary. Hello, welcome to Great Mother Speaks. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse. And today we're talking about a mighty journey into the Taurus and Gemini full moon. Welcome, everyone. This is in Scorpio and Vedic astrology. Your full moon is in Taurus. And in the Western tropical astrology, of course, the sun is in Sag. It's been in Sag for a couple of weeks now. And our full moon is in Gemini. I mean our, because what I want to talk about is the sage and the regenerator. That's the sun, because the full moon is that sun reflection on the moon. And so we are talking about that sage in Sagittarius with the Western astrology, which is earth-focused, earth-oriented, earth-centric. That sage in that that medium, that milieu. What is a sage in the Western world? Okay? And the moon reflecting that in Western astrology with the Gemini, the inquisitive, communicator, fun loving, um, you know, du- dualistic, you know, can see both sides, diplomatic. How is that moon reflecting that Western sage? And in Vedic astrology, as you listen, you're going to be looking at that scorpion that is in and out of the underworld and up and down. And that rejuvenation, that kundalini up and down the 10th chakra to the, you know, 12th we want to talk about. The 1st to the 7th is what we can see in those other chakras that actually go two feet into the ground up above our heads into the auric field. That journey of Scorpio, sun. And the moon being in Taurus, which is that grounding, that secure, that real, loyal, clear about desires and beauty and what balance is and experiencing that being reflected by that rejuvenation, that digestion, that processing of the physical ephemeral experience so we are on the precipice of the ancient times of darkness in which the light shone through so happy Christmas Hanukkah happy Christmas Hanukkah this is for (coughs) all of us and for all traditions a time where we look for the light because we are surrounded by darkness in the northern hemisphere and mostly western astrology so it's a time of really getting in touch with that inner guru, that inner Christos, that inner soul of what you know, you know, you know, to guide you to be the guiding light. And in our Vedic astrology, and the reason we go back and forth with this is let me tell you, all great mother has to do is love. And that's so hard for us to understand that we have to look for the light in other words we have to want to know why we're worthy we have to want to know you know what that means to be a divine child of the great mother father god we have to desire that revelation in order for it to be real in us that's the kundalini journey and so when we talk about the mentality that divides the ignorance of our divinity and the living experiential bliss of that experience We're talking about Western and Vedic astrology. Yours. Get your chart in the description box below so that you'll know which one you are. Because when you want to tap into that inner guru, you're going to be looking at your Vedic Joytish astrology to see what's going on with your soul evolution. Because Vedic astrology is moon 
biased, I'll say. It's not moon-centric. It is based on an astrology that is astronomically correct, not astrologically. That's just what we're talking about, astrology. I'm talking about over there at NASA astronomically correct in terms of the actual measurements in the cosmos it's not centered on anything but it is biased toward the moon <clears throat> okay and so we are in lunar cycles with great mother energy that is a cycle that all it does is love on us that's a planet that that's all it does that's all the moon does you look up any definition of the moon it's about connection it's about you know uh, uh, loving communication and partnering and that's all it does is love on us and with a commitment of a great mother because it it surrounds us it revolves around us this whole life is about us you know and the moon changes every two and a half days into a different sign and so right now it is in Gemini in the western and it is in Taurus in the Vedic so in the Vedic, you're going to see what your moon is doing on a soul level. How is the moon affecting your soul in the cosmos? So, so many of us are aware that our souls are not in our bodies. We don't know where our soul is. Yeah, we're alive. And so that means that there is an auric field that sustains this life. But it's a dull mentality. Because it's so dense. But when we get into the soul coming into the body and when we're ready to learn those lessons and when we're ready to tap into that inner guru, we, we tap into the, our, our, our Vedic to see, okay, so the moon is in Taurus and Vedic right now and it's a full moon. Okay, so Taurus means, well, that's earthy, that's whatever. Do your basic and just go through your basic understanding of Taurus and see how your soul is experiencing your incarnation right now okay so the sun is in scorpio in vedic how is it being rejuvenated what types of things is it processing those deep things that you're going through your soul is experiencing that through you like a lens that's been put on a camera it's looking through your, your lens and let's say the soul is um, the operator of the camera. But the actual camera itself is the karma, the composite experiences of that soul. That is its first filter. And we accumulate those over lifetimes. But that's the camera. It has all the bells and whistles that need to make a photograph happen. And that's all a lifetime is. It's a snapshot of an experience. And so... The camera is adjusted right now to this incarnation once it puts that lens on. It's a different lens. It's a different lifetime. So the camera is the karma. The operator is the soul. And the lens is whatever and whoever you call yourself. Your biography at the, on the back of your book, on the back of your snapshot. That's your ego. Okay, and that is what the lens is and seeing. That's how the lens is seeing this experience right now. Okay, and so you can say, okay, well, my Western is that lens, you know, snapping around on the camera, refocusing. And if you're too young to remember those types of cameras, just pick up a National Geographic, um, you know, pre-1990. Okay, and you'll see the difference in the photos. You know, they're more earthy. You know, anyway, this is what you want to do because all Great Mother does is love. That's her job. That is her only job. That is all she does in all the different signs and in the Vedic and all the different nakshatras. Okay, so you want to do the same with when you know that you're being emotional and you all in your feelings, as they say, all in your emotions, that Western astrology. Okay, so we want to make that very clear because the assumption is people who subscribe to this channel either already know this or want to, you know, 
it's the assumption is to you in order to understand what great mother is coming through saying you have to have this very rudimentary basic understanding of yourself in order to understand what she's saying to you because she doesn't see us the way we see ourselves okay <laughs> And so you'll see that once you get hit to what's going on with your birth chart, you know, that's that's a snapshot of your collective karma. OK, that's that that's a snapshot of that. You got snapshots of individual lives. You have a snapshot of the whole picture, you know, and that's the whole picture. And that is how she sees us with love, with the awareness of what it means that she and great Father God have produced a legacy of divinity throughout the cosmos and one of its form is in the human form okay and all her job is is to love all of creation perpetuate it she is the creatrix so if, if that is you and you and, and you were creating the cosmos, how would you see your child? <laughs> how would you see your child? Your child is a freaking bomb, okay? <laughs> and so the stuff that we're going through and everything, she completely knows because forget DNA, we're part of the source. That's our mama. That's our mama. <laughs> so... We get to create whatever we want to create. And one of the things we create is this illusion of not being a divine child. Let, let, let me just see what it feels like if I were to imagine or actually believe. Let's do that life. If I actually believed I was not a divine child of great mother, father, God, what would that be like? And that's what we're doing. That's what we're down here doing. We're playing that game. And Satan sits at the base of the tree until we're ready and we're tired. That game ain't fun no more. I ain't got beat up too many times. I don't like it. ain't fun no more. Divine child. Once you realize you're a divine child again of the great mother, father, God, and you cannot be tempted anymore to be pulled back into the illusion, he, he flees. His job is done. You ate the apple on your own choice. We ate the apple on our own choice. And once we've digested it, and that's what's going on with this Scorpio sun still in Vedic. It's in the energy for the soul astrology to be regenerating right now. And that makes a lot of sense. Regeneration is death and rebirth. Happy Christmas, Hawanaka. Okay, and so that's when Jesus was born. And at that time, there were 10 months in the calendar, I believe. Uh, it depends. I forget the date for the Romulus calendar. But the Romulus calendar uh, took over the lunar calendar from the goddess era. And so that is what takes us into understanding the difference between astrology and mythology. Now, Great Mother incarnates as the moon. Astrology and mythology are very closely linked. Western astrology is based on the actual incarnation, you know, of the physical earth. And so it's a very yang orientation. And to balance that out, in its mythology, it says that the earth goddess is a woman. And so in order to balance out that very strong orientation, that perceptual orientation of yourself as a divine child, okay, before you are incarnated, then if you're highest science about the cosmos then is looking from an orientation of I'm a divine child it balances out that soul experience it gives it a contrast to where we will be indoctrinated conditioned educated to believe the earth is a semblance of the yin energy 
to balance out that yang, that very strong incarnational physical material orientation. In the Vedic astrology, the cosmos is seen as a more physical material thing that can be measured and calculated then the actual feminine is the moon in terms of its cosmic orientation okay that is the mother and so the mother then is what you focus on if you're looking at the earth whatever planet you're looking at in Vedic astrology you're going to look through its moon and so if that is the highest spiritual orientation that you're going to have once you incarnate that the cosmos is femininely biased then when you actually incarnate to balance that out many of your earth gods are what you associate the earth with you know is the masculine because it is the actual physical incarnation of what you are experiencing from that perspective whereas in the western perspective the feminine is something that has to be taken care of so astrology and mythology are are the same that's why they're the same and that's why we talk about cosmic communities you know we live in a galaxy we live in the milky way that's just one of trillions upon trillions i'm sure google's we don't even have the word for it uh galaxies okay and so we talk about greek mythology and we talk about vedic astrology and we talk about Greek mythology, and they are so closely related because that's where we get the names of our planets, okay? That's what we name our planets because we observe the personalities and, again, very much personalizing and putting a specific lens on the physical experience. And so the assumption is one would have some understanding of that and that they are two divine children of the great mother, father, God, God incarnated as a God or a goddess. And that awareness is so basic and so fundamental to these readings that I just had to take a moment because sometimes saying that she provides clarity, balance, and confirmation is enough. But other times I have to really focus on we are divine children of the Great Mother, Father God. Therefore, we are divinely and dearly loved. We are dearly loved. And that because of that, there's never any judgment or condemnation. That is such a low vibration, but it's a valuable one because it engenders the desire to know more of thyself. And so, again, um, I highly encourage you to find out both of your Joytish and Western astrology to see where you are in terms of your material focus of the illusion that we are having, that we're experiencing right now as not being divine children of the Great Mother, Father God, and then see where your soul is pushing you when something is really on your heart and in your mind, which is what Great Mother is all about. She's right there with you. And so take advantage. Another way to look at it is just own your divinity and say, my mama right here, let me go ahead and look at my Vedic astrology and see, you know, how she's whispering because she's a still small voice. She ain't going to be on the radio. Ain't going to be in a whole bunch of blogs breaking it down, really, you know, so you understand it. You know, I mean, there will be some general information that we've had throughout the ages. But for you to know you, you're going to have to do some research. 
just enough for you to watch the back of Satan walk away. So you can really feel her love coming through her messages. Okay? So you can really feel that. Enjoy your December full moon 2017 full moon reading. Hi, Cancer Moon people. Welcome to your December full moon reading. Let's see what Great Mother has to say to you. You are ruled by the moon. So the lunar intelligence that governs your action of your sun sign is in Cancer. That maternal energy always, that loving energy, that healing energy that domestic energy. Now it also depends on what degree you're in, but generally speaking, and in these readings they all start in the first house, and so the lunar aspect that we're using generally is as if Cancer is in your first house. If you'd like a personal reading where you will find the description box below your moon to be perhaps in the fourth, tenth, or even twelfth house, you can contact me for that. What Great Mother is saying to you Cancer Moon people is that for this full moon in Gemini Taurus, this very soulful uh, Taurian energy that we find with Cancer here in the 11th house has to do with wanting to share your gifts in the world. And so the soul energy is really wanting to come through right now. And it's really trying to Determine what needs to be released in your life in order to par down to uh, your energy in an efficient enough way to do that in a way that's pleasing to you and in a way that makes sense for you. It is wanting to feed that uh, full moon energy of the ego sunshine expression in um, Scorpio in the soul Vedic energy in a way that um, enables you to take advantage of this intelligent willpower. You're really wanting to um, come from a true sincere desire with wh what you're wanting to share with the world and this outward expression is being hindered right now um, with this uh, Gemini lunar energy of um, the communication aspect with cancer. Now, of course, with cancer, Gemini is in the 12th house, and so that might be um, some indication that what you're considering may isolate you from the rest of the world. What you are considering as your gift, your talent that you're wanting to share with the world may be something that has to do with your subconscious and how you use your subconscious to generate some type of creative endeavor. And that might be the cause of some concern to you or others around you may be making it an issue that, oh, you don't have that particular gift or talent or why are you thinking about that? Or if it is yourself uh, speaking this way to yourself, what Great Mother is urging you to do, Cancer Moon people, is to self-inquire. Now, we know that when this card comes up from the Great Mother Speaks deck, it's always in the sentiment of the work of Byron Katie. If there is a fear thought or a thought of judgment or an idea that causes pain in any way, it needs to be questioned. So is it true that I don't have the ability? You know, is it absolutely true I don't have the interior wherewithal to cultivate the type of creative gift that I'm contemplating? Is that true? And we can see here by the third quarter moon, Cancer Moon people, that that release, that need to forgive, that need to let go with the law of the Divine Mother has to do with that internal space, that yin space, this space that you're very comfortable with emotionally. What she's saying is tap into that and ask yourself that because the third quarter moon is the moon of release. See, that is the moon of release. And again, we're using the spiral spectrum phases of the moon calendar here. Maybe I should take it out of here so you can see it without the glare. 
the that's the release that you're wanting here and so something needs to be let go of and by the indication of this card self-inquiry that would mean any painful thoughts anything that's making you question the authenticity of your desire great mother is urging you in this Taurus Gemini full moon to go on with that communicative um, deep grounded sense that is kind of smoldering within yourself and wanting to come out in the Scorpio Sagittarius light she's saying that in order to do that you're going to touch bases with your androgyny nature that's the masculine and feminine polarities within all of us our DNA from our birth parents and of course who we are as gods and goddesses from the great mother father God she's coming through and she's saying to you cancer moon people that in this balsamic moon period of transformation of rest of recuperation your angels guides and ancestors are supporting your self-expression see that's the fifth chakra there at the top of the balsamic moon the fifth chakra and so there's something unique to you that you're wanting and that you're needing to express right now and she's encouraging you to do that so continue the investigation that you're doing continue the divine expression exploration that you're doing if you've already begun that process she's saying that your angels guides and ancestors are taking you where you need to go and whatever promptings that you're getting in terms of what to investigate and even what to do entertain those things and actively pursue those attitudes behaviors and opportunities what not to overlook cancer moon people is the Ankh. now you have two balsamic moon cards the Ankh card is the third eye card and so that cancerian energy showing with our Taurus Gemini full moon these are both masculine signs Taurus and Gemini they're masculine aspects of the third of, of the third chakra okay so we have um, Aries Scorpio okay the Scorpio is the feminine of the third chakra um, and then we have the fourth chakra Taurus and Libra and so the Taurus in Libra is ruled by Venus beauty this beautiful divine expression that you're having come through through your fifth chakra your speaking your expression be it writing it could be um, blogging it could be doing videos it could be anything that you're expressing your playwriting okay poetry she's encouraging you and your angels guides and ancestors are giving you the guidance that you need to pursue it as you know within yourself you need to do in this incarnation the incarnation spirit of the soul dealing with your Vedic sign and so that soul energy okay of this moon in Taurus okay that beauty that being expressed that masculine so that means action needs to happen right and so the Sun full moon Scorpio showing us the light of that regeneration so something is being regenerated with you cancer moon people and regeneration means that there's a death for there to be a rebirth and so that is the third quarter moon of that release now our two yin symbols this is the double yin card with the ankh in the middle which in this deck symbolizes the second chakra is telling us that that internal wisdom that you have as cancer moon people is really what you're going to be tapping into throughout this full moon process of course the ego in the Gemini moon okay that ego expression of Gemini communication okay diplomacy aligning and being able to integrate the polarities making peace with yourself about what may be doubtful about what you can or what you can't do being able to end the war as they say within oneself between the ego and the soul and recognizing that that 
ego astrology that is personality oriented is wanting to make peace we see the half and half here with the third quarter moon and the opportunity for that peace to come through your inner knowing through the double yin sign and the third eye sign and the double portion of your angels guides and ancestors in the balsamic moon which is the period of rest relaxation recuperation it is the period of actually contemplation and that full release okay that full release from the balsamic moon from the third quarter moon so that you can recede and replant exactly what it is that you're wanting to do. What, what is that creative endeavor? What is that work? What is that job that you're going to be pulling from that 12th house? Gemini from Cancer in the first house. What are you going to be pulling from that 11th house? You know, that soul place that really is wanting to share your gifts and talents with the world, with the collective. How are you going to do that? Well, you know, and the Cancer Moon people are in touch with that, and Great Mother is coming through with the confirmation. You have all the guidance, love, and protection that you need to divinely express yourself. This full moon, Cancer Moon people, thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember, Great Mother loves you. And I do too. Great Mother Spirit. I am Great Mother, Holy Spirit, Yin, Divine Mother, Cosmic Moon, Deep Space, the Moon, Dark Matter, the Void, the Black Hole, Atar, Isis, Diana, Mami, Ishtar, Kali, Mammy, and Mother Mary. Hello, welcome to Great Mother Speaks. I'm Tammy Taylor, your manifestation muse. And today we're talking about 